Felix Stowe docks, berths 8, 9, 10 and Trinity docks. In this video I'll show beginners or people who've never been to Felixstowe docks how to get firstly into berths 8, 9 and 10, uh, the booking in procedure and also where to go, where to park up in the transport holding areas, where to go to tip empty containers and hopefully to make the journey a lot less stressful. I would make sure you have your 45 minute break before entering the docks because you're not allowed a break in the docks. The Felix Stowe docks itself is huge. It's almost a small town and can be very daunting and stressful if you've never been there before. But the one good thing about it is everywhere is signposted. There are signs everywhere. All you've got to do is take your time, look out for them, read them and follow them. As with most docks, and big industrial areas. Health and safety is of the utmost importance and they will crack down on you very hard. So PPE is a must. High-vis jackets and hard hats and safety boots, definites. When making this video, I'm assuming that everyone has been on the online course or the courses at each of the docks and now also hold the cards. All the way to the end of the A14 you pick up the signs for the docks. If you're going to Trinity docks only then you can take the signs and the exit for dock gate 2 but in this instance I'm going to assume that you're going to go to Berths 8, 9, we'll include 10 but we'll just call it eight, Births 8 and 9, that's what it's generally known as. It's the automated area where you have the automated cranes. If you haven't got your card or you need to take your initial entrance test as it were. You follow this road to the left at the roundabout. Just past the police station behind these containers on the left. Turn up there and as you go through in between the containers there's a lorry park as you turn left, pull up there and follow the signs to the offices. Be aware at all times of the traffic situation whilst on the docks. The big heavy industrial cranes pickups that they use are massive and slow moving so always be aware of moving traffic whilst on the docks again as I said before keep an eye out for signs these help no end as you book into Berth 8 and 9 area. Join the queue if there is one. If not, take up available space. If there is a queue, just join the back of it. If not, just go into any of the 
allotted bays, make your way towards the canopy. If you have a container on your trailer, there will be a guy or a lady, but I've only ever seen a guy who will make a note on his tablet of the container number. And by the time you get to the kiosks, either left or right, doesn't matter, you will be able to book in using the information provided to you by your office. All you've got to do is go to the little kiosk and follow what it says on the terminal screen. It's very easy to follow. And as long as you've got your card, the details are correct and the information you put in is correct, it will let you through. Once you've put your card onto the terminal reader, it will issue you with a ticket giving you the information you need as to where you will be going. Normally here 8 and 9 it tends to be the transport holding area the THA which you just follow the signs for and then you park up Usually you will have given your phone number at the kiosk and the details will be held by the docks. They will then send a message to your phone telling you that you can now continue on to have your container lifted off. When you arrive under the canopy at the entrance, there is an area where you can do your twist locks. Make sure that these are in the correct position before you drive through. Once you've received your information that you can now go to the next stage of your delivery, you pull out of the THA up to another kiosk, place your card on the reader, it will give you a printout 
telling you where to go to have your container picked up. Once you leave the THA and you've got your ticket, just follow the signs. Where you came in is over on the right. You usually bear to the left, come to a junction and turn right. In this video, I have done two tipping areas. Q, block Q and block W. All you've got to do is keep an eye out. So first one will be in this particular video Q block. Follow it round, keep an eye out for your sign. Turn right and nine times out of ten you have to join a short queue and this involves just pulling up behind the vehicles in front and await your turn. It's as simple as that. You just pull alongside the containers forklift driver will either beckon you on or beep you on or will expect you just to follow on. You wait, he comes along, picks up the container, you pull forward, you can either give him a little beep on the horn to say you're clear and you're pulling forward. Um, this isn't always necessary but it's just a, a way to say thanks pal. You then pull off, find your way out of the yard, just following the signs to the exit, but not the exit to the whole docks. It'll bring you back round. If you're going to go to Trinity with an empty skelly on the back, that's the empty trailer once your container has been taken off. Known in the trade as a skelly, as in skeleton trailer, because there's not an awful lot on it, just the chassis. But if you're going to go to Trinity direct from birth eight and nine, then this is the way you would go. I've gone in this video another way to show you how to get to new forklift tipping areas 
W X Y Z. Slightly different to Q Park. You look, you get a number, you look for your numbers on the floor. As here, there is already a queue. So if your number is near to the back of the queue, just join the queue and pull forward as and when. If, like in this instance, my number is quite a way away you kind of jump the queue it's okay pick up your number further along the line you've also got to watch out for any dock traffic the big pickups the big forklifts their own transport and you must give them right of way. Once you've found your number, 
pull alongside it and wait. It's usually pretty quick. The forklift driver will know you're there. He'll also know on his screen what you, where you are relative to where he's going to be putting his container. So, once you, when you were first scan your card on the consoles when you first book in, it kind of lets the whole system know who you are, what you are, what you're doing, i.e. dropping an empty, picking up a full one, and every time you swipe your card on a console, it's allowing the system to keep a track of you, what's going on. So the forklift driver and the crane operators know what container goes where and who's bringing it or taking it. Once the container has been lifted off, again in this instance I'll be going to Trinity with an empty skelly, keeping a, a watchful eye out for all the other traffic. As you can see here, drivers tend to know what they're doing. And I'm just going to follow the signs out of the yard to the exit and that will bring us back to where we originally came in at the first roundabout where we turn left. Just before where you turn left to go to the booking in testing area on your initial card health and safety test check or whatever you want to call it When we get to the roundabout, we're going to bear left. We're going to head for Trinity Docks. Again, this is all a massive area. I'm speeded up the footage here. Just to, you just literally follow the road. Just keep following the signs. It takes about, I don't know, five minutes to get from eight and nine to Trinity.
Again, similar to booking in at eight and nine. If you've got an empty skelly like I have, there are lanes specifically for empty skellies. These are over on the right. So we would join them because we're not booking in any containers to be taken off. So the guy with his little laptop, sorry, with his little tablet does not need to take a number because we haven't got one. So we would book in as normal to find out where we are going to collect our container from. Again, this will be given to you via the console with a ticket or a slip, whatever you want to call it, giving you the locations. Once you've collected your slip from the console, we're just going to follow the traffic, follow the signage, out again. Speed limit on the whole site is 20 mile an hour. It doesn't matter if you go a little bit slower when you first get there to get your bearings because there's an awful lot going on. There's an awful lot to see and try and understand. So following the signs with your location printed out on your slip, your ticket, and you're just looking for numbers that tally up with where you need to be. So just keep checking. There is another big THA, transport holding area, just here on the right, where you can sort out twist locks etc or if you've been told to go and wait for your allotted space time and area sometimes this happens you get there and your container isn't ready yet so they'll park you up again they'll have your information of your phone and they'll just send a message to you letting you know when you can leave You then find out where you are and you're looking for letters. It's blocks, letters and numbers. That's how it tends to go. So once you've found your block, you come in, follow along, looking for your letters. You pick up the letters which are printed either on the floor or in some instances on big blocks painted blocks at the end of each row of containers you pick up the numbers and letters that you need as you enter your lane you now have to start watching out for traffic coming in the opposite direction and a quick uh, 
bit of advice here. If you're picking up a reef or a refrigerated container, as you're pulling along the containers and you get to your numbers area, look up and see which way round they're facing because the crane will only lift them up as they are. They can't turn them round. So if you, your number is placed where all the containers, the fridges are facing in effect the wrong way, so when the crane picks them up, if they put them on your trailer, the fridge is at the back, not the back doors. So what you have to do, you then have to go past. In effect, what you have to do is carry on down the line, turn around and then come back up the way you've just come. Obviously, now you're facing the wrong way against the flow of traffic, but in effect, you're the right way around for when you collect your refrigerator. Just something, your refrigerated container. Just something to bear in mind it has happened where the container is put on the wrong way around but even if that happens you can get it sorted you go back to the THA phone up the number which is either on your paperwork your ticket or on signs around the docks customer service phone them let them know what's happened and then they will direct you to another area where a crane or a forklift will just lift it up and spin it around for you or take it off and you turn around as it were so that's something to watch out for other than that once you've picked up your letter for your lane you then start looking for your numbers numbers go from high to low so right at the end of the stack of containers will be a high number and at the beginning the low numbers. You just literally pick up your numbers on the floor and you need to be over on the left and because the crane operators are a little bit let's say awkward you have to get your trailer lined up with the length of the container so there is a, an element of looking where your twist locks are in the front so as you pull forward make sure the twist locks line up with the container to your left so that when the crane operator arrives he will not be going backwards and forwards he will expect you to pull forwards or reverse even if it's just a few inches and what tends to happen is they will just hover if they're hovering above you for any more than about 30 seconds to a minute have a look out your window and see where your trailer is situated in relation to the container above you what you can't do is get out at this time so stay in your cab at all times but you can look out the window if it's okay he will then proceed to drop the container onto your trailer. This can make you jump because it's quite a loud bang and it's quite a violent drop, especially if they're dropping 20 odd tons onto your empty skelly. He will either then beep to say you're clear or you just check in your mirrors at your window and then you beep to say you're clear and pull off. Don't do your twist locks yet because there's space for you to do that just as you're leaving. But bear in mind now, your twist locks are not locked. So when you're driving around the docks, be aware corners things like that you now got a heavy load take your time you're picking up the signs for the exit
just follow the signs through you come to the exit and you will see other drivers doing their twist locks before they get to the canopy or if you just wait there is an area just before you get under the canopy to get out and safely lock your twist locks then back into your cab pull forward to the barrier the barriers will go up usually automatically but don't pull forward you then have to get out there will be a person who will do the same as when you first arrived he will take a note of your container number the seal etc he will put it on his system the system will then update the main system which then allows you to get out of the docks by offering up your card to the console again and then just following the instructions on the console screen in this particular instance there is a policewoman waiting to do security checks this doesn't happen every time but be aware that it does happen and they are allowed to do it they will get you to give you the name and then where they will give a cab search and then once that is complete they will say thank you very much off you go you're then free to exit the canopy pick up the exit signs as you leave the docks nine times out of ten if you're coming from Trinity you will tend to exit using dock gate 2 which is the dock that I suggested you could use if you were going to direct to Trinity Docks right at the start of the A14 you didn't have to go to Dock Gate 1 if you're not going to either go to the card collection health and safety test whatever or births 8 and 9 you'd go off the A14 follow it through and then come off at dock gate 2 which will bring you down this way So once you've left Trinity, you have to go through one more check. And this is the police or security cabin. They will then make a quick check or via cameras, comes up on their computer screen whether it's cleared and you're okay to leave. They usually wave. Sometimes they will stop you, just have a quick word. Nine times out of ten, you're okay to leave and you're back on your way. Another little bit of advice if you're dropping off an empty container at Pentalva then they are here over on the left in this little area on your left there's a few companies that operate out of here Solent and things like that they're about they're over on the left definitely Pentalva's over on the left so if you're coming from the A14, instead of going direct to Trinity, there's a little slip road to your right and you just cross over and they're down there on your right at the roundabout. You'll see them, you can't miss them.
for newbie container drivers just be aware as you join the main roads you've got a heavy load on so usually 20 odd tons plus they're quite high so center of gravity is a little bit awkward watch it when you come to your first roundabout you're bearing left you can't bear right because that goes into Felixstowe town you bear left at the island and it will start to roll I have seen a couple of containers over there in the past just take it nice and easy and also your braking will be a lot more different than when you drove for four odd hours before you actually got here with an empty I know it's a bit of a long video this but it's the whole lot hope it helps it can be daunting just keep having a look at the video till it gets settled in your mind they offer maps online it's very big there's an awful lot going on it can be a little bit scary just take your time there are people around to ask just remember you can't stop and get out your cab when you want to if you do get out your cab hard hats rule as does high-vis jackets so I hope this has helped if it has please can you do the normal thumbs up subscribe hit the bell etc etc thanks for watching fingers crossed I hope you have a good one thank you